In this video, we're gonna go through seven steps to help you get your bike set up just right. Whether you've just taken delivery of a new bike and you want to get it set up before you go riding, or whether you've had your bike for ages, there may still be something in here that could help you get more out of your bike. So your bike is more comfortable and performs at its best for you. As a bike tester at Bike Radar, I get to ride a whole lot of bikes. And these are the seven steps I use to get my bike set up well before I hit the trails. So the first thing is really obvious, but really important, and it's saddle height. If you get this wrong, you can cause yourself all kinds of problems and you won't be getting power down as efficiently. So one way to do this is to measure your saddle height from the top of the saddle to the bottom bracket. Another way of doing it is to sit on the bike with one of the pedals at its lowest position. And then with your bum on the saddle and your heel on the pedal, your leg should be completely locked out in that position. And then your saddle is in the right ballpark. So to adjust the saddle height, just loosen the seat clamp, whether it's a, an Allen key like this one, or a quick release seat clamp, adjust the height of the saddle, make sure it's straight, and then re-tighten the seat clamp. Obviously, if you have a dropper seat post, make sure that's fully extended before you do this. So step number two is to set the saddle angle. Now, most people like the saddle to be completely horizontal or slightly pointed down at the nose. And particularly if you ride a lot of steep climbs and if you have a full suspension bike, you might want the saddle to be tilted further down at the nose because the full suspension bike will kind of slacken and kind of move backwards into its travel when you start going uphill. Most bikes have a twin bolt seat post nowadays and to adjust the angle of the saddle with one of those, you want to loosen one of the bolts and then tighten the other one. So if you want to angle the saddle down at the front, you'll loosen the rear bolt and then tighten the front bolt until the correct angle is reached and then tighten both bolts alternately until the saddle is secure on the seat post again. One more thing to think about, while the two bolts are loose, you can just slide the saddle on its rails relative to the seat post. Personally, I like to slide it all the way forwards with most bikes. That effectively gives you a steeper seat angle so your hips are more forwards relative to the bottom bracket and that makes a bike much more eager to climb. Whereas if you ride on flatter trails or if the bike's a bit small for you, you may want to put it further back. The third thing to think about is your bar height. Now this has a really important effect on how the bike will handle, particularly when you're descending. Set it too high and you may find it's hard to get enough pressure on the front tire when you're doing flat corners. Set it too low and you can find it's hard to get far enough away from the front wheel on steep climbs. And it's also harder to push the bike into the back of steep chutes. Uh, this step may take a few rides to find a position that you're most comfortable with, but generally speaking, taller riders will want to set it higher and shorter riders will want to slam it much lower. So to adjust your bar height, you first want to loosen the bolt at the top of the steerer tube and fully remove it along with the top cap. Then loosen the two bolts that sit at the back of the stem. Then you can slide the stem off the steerer along with any spaces and then put spaces below the stem to raise the bar height or put spaces from below the stem to above the stem to lower it. Then reinstall your top cap and top cap bolt. Just nip that up till it's tight. Then make sure the bar is straight and the stem is aligned with the front wheel and then re-tighten the two stem bolts and you're good to go. Now the fourth step, and this is often overlooked, is the bar roll. That's how the handlebar sits in the stem. So if you have your bar rolled further forwards, that will generally encourage you to have your elbows higher and bring your weight a little bit more forwards on the bike. This is generally considered to be better for flat cornering. Whereas if you roll the bar back so that the ends of the bar are more horizontal, this will generally be better for steep descents. But really it's about what feels most comfortable with your hands and your wrists. So to check your bar roll, first line up your eye horizontally with the handlebar so you're looking at it straight on and then you want to roll the bar so that the grips are just pointed slightly up from horizontal. Oftentimes they'll be pointed down from horizontal or really pointed skywards but if they're just up from horizontal I find that's a really good place to start. So to adjust your bar roll just loosen two of the faceplate bolts on your stem so they could be the top two or the bottom two just enough so that it, you can roll the bar in the stem, but not so loose that you might accidentally move it from side to side. 
And while you're doing this, it's a good idea to check that your bar is perfectly central within the stem. Then you can roll your bar either up or down and then re-tighten the faceplate bolts and then recheck to see how the bar roll is looking. And remember that like bar height, this is something that you might want to come back to and adjust later on. So once you're happy with your bar roll, then you can move on to step five, which is setting up your controls. And the first thing you want to set up is the brake levers. So with your hand resting comfortably on the grip, you want your index finger to sit naturally just inside of the curved bit at the end of the lever blade. This will give you maximum leverage on the brake so you have maximum power for one finger braking. So to do this, you may first need to loosen the shifter so that it can slide out of the way and then also loosen the clamp that secures the brake lever to the handlebar. Then simply slide the brake lever inboard or outboard until it gets that position we just described. Then retighten the brake lever and do the same thing on the other side. Most modern bikes will have plenty of power to stop you with one finger braking, particularly if you set them up like this so that you maximize the leverage of that one finger. The next thing to think about is the angle of the brake lever. Now there's a lot of personal preference and even fashion that goes into this setting, but I find if the brake levers are relatively horizontal, it makes it a bit easier to move around the bike and also to push into the bike to get more grip. So to adjust this, you want the bolt to be loose enough that the brake levers will easily move up and down without scoring the handlebar, but not so loose that it will move from side to side while you're making the adjustment. And once you find a position that you're happy with, just tighten that bolt up and then check that the other side is at the same angle and tighten that one up too. So in a similar way to the brake levers, you can move your shifter and your dropper post remote if you have one inboard and outboard, as well as moving them up and down on the handlebar until you find the most comfortable position. Now in some cases that may involve swapping the position of the brake lever and the shifter around. <laughs> Step number six is to check your tire pressure. Now, what tire pressure you want will depend on a whole range of factors, but generally speaking for mountain bikes, somewhere in the 20 to 30 PSI range is about right. You see a lot of people with a lot more than that, and really there's no reason to go above 30 PSI on a mountain bike these days. To check your tire pressure, the best thing to have is a digital tire pressure gauge. These cost about 10 pounds, but they will give you a really accurate, consistent, precise measurement. But if you don't have one of those, uh, the gauge on a track pump will be absolutely fine for most people. Then the final step before you can go ride is to set up your suspension. Now there's a lot more to this than the other steps, so we've made a whole video on it, and we've left a link to that in the description below. This video covers everything you need to get your suspension in the right ballpark, including setting your sag, your rebound speed, and getting your suspension to feel balanced from front to rear. I think it's well worth going through that whole process, so check the link below. So that's the procedure I use to get my bike set up. I really hope it helps you to get more out of your bike. Let us know how you get on in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you click the little bell icon, you'll get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for watching.